back tonight on the bunny by a length and a half. West on Brett tries hard, but the leader accelerates and gets away. Karen Shadow third, then Danny Reltab and Oscar. But back tonight in front, West on Brett is trying to get there, but back tonight a length and a half. Back tonight has a fight on his hands. Flintoff is a head away. Then Crystal Journey level five. Back tonight draws clear though. He's going back to back in the birthday cup. Yes, that was back tonight collecting his second birthday cup back in 2008. He is the only dual winner of the race. But will Crumble Manelli become the second when he goes around in the 2024 edition on Friday night? Hello, my name is James Broadhurst and joining me, as he always does, is the monarch of the mic, the regal race caller himself, Hayden King. Hayden Wow, this birthday cup final on Friday night is an absolute perler. Yeah, we had some steaming heats there last Friday, and it all sets up for the final on Friday. It's a tremendous race, it has to be said. We've got pace, we've got strength, and it all comes together in a culmination of cup glory. <laughs> And we're going to dissect that in just a moment. And history beckoning, perhaps, for Crumble Manelli. Let's get straight into it and have a look at this field. And as we've mentioned, it is an absolute cracker. Hayden, I said before the series, I wanted to see the kennel mates Crumble Manelli and Cubit Manelli go head to head. We've got that and a whole lot more. Renegade Cochise comes into this with six straight wins under his belt and a blistering first section in his heat last week. West on Booney, the all-star sprint winner, gets the red three from three from the pole. So much to talk about, but before we do that, let's go back to Crumble Manelli's heat run, and the defending birthday cup champ had a nervous moment from box six early stages, but he pushed through to seize the front, and while he couldn't quite shake Barrio Beast, Crumble was ultimately too good your thoughts on that run and the dog's chances in this final it was a good run however he was definitely marginally slower through that first section a length or two than he had produced at his previous couple of runs when he'd really been jumping well so providing he's able to jump that well on friday he's going to be banged there outside of a dog like renegade kachis who ran that absolutely blistering first section i know mandra's only been going for a little while now over that distance but that's the fastest early section i've seen that was crazy stuff how fast renegade kachis hopped out so he's going to put himself right in the thick of it and he's hitting form at the right time over this 400 meter trip of course he had those woes with getting out of the boxes with the same rapidity that we'd seen in the past but he's coming back crumble oh it certainly is uh, as you mentioned though not quite as sharp in that heat and in a final like this where it is talent laden maybe that little fraction will be the difference that might open the door for another runner be it renegade coach Jeez, we know that dog's gonna ping the lids what about the kennel mate cubid Manelli? he lacks that bit of early speed as well he can muster up really hard and he's probably say this race was over 488 i'd be chips in it's probably between he, Crumble, West on Booney, dogs like that, but I think he's the strongest of those. Well, he's Booney's strong, he's strong, but he's got a bit more change-up speed than Booney. But 400, when you've got some crack 400-metre dogs, you can't afford to be giving away any kind of start, and I fear that is what may happen with him. Is there a possibility with him, though, that uh, with the so much speed, the speeches might foul themselves up and create an opportunity for a Cubit Manelli or an all, uh, a Weston Booney? That isn't what I've got happening. Okay. But it's never completely ruled You never can rule it out in these big finals. So much that could happen. Of course, Cubit Manelli is or was the track record holder over the 400. Held it for a couple of weeks before conceding it to crumble Manali does come in as the fastest qualifier i think this dog has got a massive future whether that future is over the 400 or longer as you've suggested i think more likely over longer and whether that future commences like right now or in a month or two uh, we'll, we'll find out i guess on mm. friday night but the dog to watch for sure cubit Manali. 
All right. So, what do you think? What, how do you think this plays out? I think Renegade Cachise leads. I yep. think Crumble Manelli parks up second. I think in Crumble's advantage, he's got a lot of those steady beginners on his outside rather than his inside. And for a 400 metre race, a few of these don't actually have that much speed. We've, we're used to seeing them over longer trips. So he's got Cubit Minelli on his outside, who I've said isn't endowed with a heap of early speed. Go see Katoni, who ran a bottler last mm. week, but wasn't any threat to Renegade Kachis early. No Limit Needed, who really jumped well and looked a winner a fair way out there in truth, but is a notedly strong dog over even 520. Sure. And then Barrio Beast out in eight, who's going to find it tough to get across from out there. I think Crumble parks up on the outside of Renegade Kachis and he's just too strong. Can you make a case at all for all over Kaja here? You can't totally rule out any of them. Yep. And what I will say about all over Kaja, his best run we've seen in some time was last week. He mm. just... TB run? He, yeah. Well, his midsection and even late, he was really fast and he's really strong. I think that's been absent at his last few. So Lewis has got this dog peaking at the right time. I liked what I saw in that heat. He will need to go to another level again, particularly on what we've seen, because he's been chasing the tail of Crumble Manelli all this campaign, really. So right. he will have to turn him over on the hardest night to do it. So Crumble Manelli for you? Yes. I think Crumble Manelli for me as well, but so much can happen in this race. But you've got to go with Crumble, don't you? Yeah. You have to. So history potentially mm. will occur on Friday night. The, the second now. dog to recapture the crown. <laughs> In the birthday cup. It's an absolute ripper. The Group 2 birthday cup at Mandra on Friday night. Because activities happening down there as well. And it is free entry. Make sure you get involved. What a night. That is always a great night. Early part of the year. School holidays. There's ha activities for the kids. Great racing. That is one of my most favourite nights of the year down there, the Birthday Cup at Mandra. Get involved Friday night. We've also got chasing on Saturday night. And Hayden, you wanted to have a look at race five. This is the 600 meter over grade five. Uh, we've got Storm Alert here out of box one. Of course, one start over the 600 meter trip. That was last week, one win. So good start for that dog. Uh, looked like he'd been looking for that extra distance for some time, right? Uh, does he go on with it now over the longer trip? We've got Acing Kuna has been runner-up uh, his past two. Does perform well over this trip. And out in box eight, we've got Wooden Hands, a dog that's been knocking on the door for some time and could be a threat here. Those are probably my top three in this one, Hayden. What do you think? I think Storm Alert's the one to beat. That time, 34.84, was pretty good over 600, first time there. I think he was empty on the line, but you can totally excuse that, and he'll be much better for that, having had that one 600-metre run. It's such a difference stepping up from your customary 520 to your first time at 600, and he showed all of the speed at the right times, and whilst he was beginning to ebb away on that stamina late, he'd set up the initiative and he'd done all the hard work. Box number one I think is good. I can't see too much pressure to his immediate outside, so he should get a good run through, and I think he's the one to beat. Ace and Cuna continues to race well. Clifton Matilda's had an interesting preparation. I think uh, Vince Rees just tried to freshen her up for this with 400, 300 metre performances, see how she goes with that. Trevor's Gift has been racing well, steps up, another that comes to the 600 now. Dandel Abdullah was good there at Mandra when fleetingly looking the winner last out. B Queen should have won on Monday, tragedy beaten there. I, I don't know how she got beaten. Someone actually messaged me after the race and he's a trots man and he said, that was those two were rorting the five and the seven because they were just team team driving. But anyway, um, no, that's a trotting thing. Hey, that's not a great. Oh, we thing. don't do that here. <laughs> Mon a Mongolian tiger needs luck and wooden hands. Racing really well needs to overcome box eight. But if he can, he's certainly in the mix. Storm alert for me. 
All right, there we go. Race five at Cannington on a Saturday night. Hey, Hayden, the track star winners from 2023 have officially been released, and I can bring those to you now. For Cannington, the track star with 22 wins over the course of the year was Couch Surfer. What a great result that was, was from by that grey. And, of course, started the year racing down at Mandra. So to collect 22 wins at headquarters over 2023 was absolutely superb. And, of course, the trainer up here, the leading trainer uh, at Cangton was Chris Health. He racked up 182 wins at Cangton over the course of the year. And the leading ownership group was the 1080 Syndicate. That's Credelli and Co., uh, 143 wins for the year at Cangton. At Mandra, of course, we had the shortened season. The track star award there was jointly held by all over Karja and Panadero Thunder. They had six wins apiece. The leading trainer at the Peel track was Damien Credelli. He had 65 wins, and the leading ownership group was Gary and Craig Weston, Linda Britton and Chris House with 46 wins. And up at Northam, the track star there was Moment in Bondi for Ben McLean, 12 wins. Ben also picked up the leading trainer award, 95 wins. And the leading owner was James Jeffries with 43 wins. Good results there. And what about that uh, effort from Couch Surfer, that dog has been superb hasn't he 22 that's a lot it is mm. you have to be a top dog for a long time and uh, a testament to the training performance as well no doubt a deserved victor of the Cannington track star Chris House in the training brigade because he's kept that dog ticking over for so long at such a high level too didn't see that dog fire in the galaxy but surely I mean, I know we're a few months out, but surely has to be one of the big guns early stages, right, for that race. Mm. The staying ranks in WA are admittedly thin at the moment. There are not too many dogs going around over those trips, so he has been afforded that luxury, but we know he's a top dog anyway. He's been tested on the eastern front in in, uh, any case, so, yeah, you have to respect that. All right, uh, lots to look forward to in 2024 after a sensational 2023 for Couchsurfer and Chris House. What about racing we've got ahead of us? We've got chasing tonight at Kington. Hayden, we've got 12 races first at 6.40. Now, neither of us could find a winner or a dog we liked at least uh, for that meeting. So we've both put our best bets into tomorrow night's racing at Mandra. When's the first race? 6.53. 6.53. 12 to be decided. 12 to be decided tomorrow night. And uh, where's your best bet? I'm going late. Race 10 at number 8. Alfie Tux went around at the birthday cup heats last week. Didn't actually begin Mm. that well, but still ran a very creditable race, I thought, in uh, finishing fourth. I think he'll ping to the front, be too good. I like a couple on the program there at uh, Mandra tomorrow night, and he heads them. So, race 10, number 8, Alfie Tux. No surer thing than after you and I talking him up <laughs> as the early ping speedster that he didn't fire out of the boxes in that heat uh, last Friday night. Look, my best bet for Thursday night at Mandra is race 5, number 1, Jet Khan, uh, racing well over the 488 metre journey, should hold up well from the pole and should be winning down there. Race 5, number 1, Jet Khan for me. Hayden, that is the show. Just can't explain enough how excited I am about this race on Friday night. It's an absolute beauty. Hopefully, you can all make it down to the track, but either way, you can see us two next week on the Wednesday preview.